Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be doing a quick introduction to Nmap. Nmap is the network mapper and it's a free and open source piece of software that's primarily used for network discovery and service detection. Although it can do much more than that by using the Nmap scripting engine, which we'll get into in later videos. If after this video you're still interested in learning more, the place where I would refer you to is their website and over here on the reference guide. With that, let's hop in and get started. The first thing you'll need to do is check and see if Nmap is already installed, and if it's not, install it. We can check and see if it's installed by running Nmap tac tac version. And if you don't get output similar to mine, then you need to install it. And you can install it by running sudo apt update and sudo apt install Nmap. And I already have it installed. Now that it's installed, let's start exploring our network. So the first thing we're going to do is run a reverse DNS lookup on all of the IP addresses in our network. And we can do that by running nmap hyphen lowercase s capital L and then the IP address of our network. And we can define our network either as a CIDR address or with a wildcard. Either way will work. So we'll run this, scroll back up to the top, and you'll see the reverse DNS entries for all of the IP addresses on our network. And this is great for administrators because often the DNS name gives us an idea of what, of what it is. So we can see router, printer, workstation, name server, server two, uh, SW is switch one, server three, and so on. Next, we're going to ping sweep the network and see what devices are actually online. So we're going to clear this out and we're going to run the ping, the ping sweep by running nmap hyphen sn. And then to only show the uh, IP addresses that answer the ping, we're going to run tac tac open and then the IP address of our network. And this time we'll run it as a CIDR address. And it came back with the answer of everything that's up. So you can see routers up, printers up, and so on. We also have uh, 2.30 and 2.9 that do not have um, a reverse DNS entry. When we do our scans, we can also exclude an IP address. So we'll clear this up. We'll go back to the scan that we just did. But this time we're going to type in tac tac exclude, and we're going to exclude the gateway and we'll run it again. And you can see this time it came back with the exact same results minus the gateway. This is often important if you're doing an assessment on a network block, but not all the IP addresses are in scope. For example, if management gives you a slash 24 network block, but inside of that block, say 1.254 is actually the gateway to a control network and is sensitive, you may want to exclude that from your scan just to make sure you don't crash anything. We can also scan hosts from a predefined list. So in this example, I have iplist.txt, and inside it, I have four IP addresses. So we'll run it by using the tac lowercase i capital L command and then define the list. So building off of our last example, we'll go nmap sn tac tac open, and then our command to define the list, lowercase i capital L, and then our IP list, and run it. And you can see that it comes back with only the IP addresses in the list. Now that we're scanning hosts, you're going to want to learn how to save your output so you can go back and look at it later. So we're going to clear that. We can use the same uh, list and we will do tac uh, lowercase o for output and then capital A for all versions. And alt version says that it's going to output all three versions. So you have the normal in-map output that looks just like the text that's on your screen. You have the XML output and the greppable output, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's made to easily grep for information. We'll call that output and then we will run it again. If we clear this and we do a listing of our desktop, you can see now that we have our output.gmap, which is the greppable. We have our standard and the XML. So let's take a quick look inside of each of those. So less output.g 
And this is going to look a little funny, but it's set up to be very greppable, as I stated. Um, we have dot inmap, which is going to look like our standard output, and then we're going to have our XML. If you're dealing with a large amount of output or if you're looking for very specific information, the greppable output is something you're going to want to get familiar with. And if you want to learn more on how to parse that in order to find that information, I would refer you again to the Nmap website and then to this section on greppable output. And if you scroll down about halfway down, it gives you examples on how to actually go through and find that information and how the greppable output is formatted. So you can see field one is port, two is state, three is protocol, and so on. Now we're going to narrow our focus and drill down onto one specific host. So for this example, we're going to use server one. So we'll run the most basic nmap against it. So nmap server01. And you can see that it comes back with a handful of open ports. So by default, nmap scans the top 1,000 most interesting ports. And to see a list of those ports, you can reference their website again. So on here, you can see we have 22, 53, 139. They're all open. And then when we get down here to 67, 89, it says filtered. Filtered means that nmap can't determine if the port's open or closed, but it's most likely closed from the location that you're at. If you want to try and get access to it, you could try scanning it from a different network address. So going deeper still, we can now enumerate the service versions that's on each of these. So we're going to run the same command as last time, except this time we're going to run TAC lowercase s capital V to enumerate the version. We'll run it one more time. And if we scroll up, you can see this time that Nmap actually went out and did a banner grab of each of the uh, services that are running. So we can see OpenSSH version 7.9 P1, generic, we can see Samba, and then 3389 XRDP. Again, by default, Nmap is only scanning the top 1,000 most interesting ports, and those are actually only the top 1,000 TCP ports. So if you wanted to scan the top 1,000 TCP and UD ports, you would run nmap-st for the TCP scan, hyphen SU for UDP, and if you wanted to enumerate versions again, you do SV and then server 01. And UDP scans do take a long time, so I won't run this one. Also, running a UDP scan does require that you do it as root, so you'll have to run it as sudo. Some of these scans, such as the UDP scan, can take a long time. So if we go back to this one and run it, you're going to see that it just sits here and says starting in map, and it's going to sit there for quite a while while it scans those top 1000 UDP ports. So if you want to see the UDP ports or any of the ports that it discovers as it discovers them, you can run tacv for verbose, and it'll display any ports that it detects as it detects them. You can also speed up the scan itself. So you can run TAC, uh, capital T, and then 4. And the higher the number, the faster it's going to run. So by default, it's TAC 3. So if you run that, it's not going to actually change anything. If you run 4, it's going to run faster. If you do 5, it's going to run at its fastest possible speed. However, if you run it at the fastest possible speed, it may time out before the server actually returns anything, so it might miss stuff. And you can also do it in the opposite way. You can run TAC2 to run it slower, so if you're trying to not hammer the server and overload it, or if you're trying to evade detection. The most powerful part of Nmap is its scripting engine. And if you want to take a look and see what scripts are available, you can take a look inside of slash user share Nmap scripts. And then in here, you can see all of the scripts that are available. So you can see we have scripts for SSL, SSH, uh, SNTP, and so on. 
The easiest way to take advantage of the scripting is, engine is by using their default safe scripts. And you can use that by running the dash lowercase s capital C option. So if we wanted to run the default scripts against our server one, we would run inmap hyphen sv. And for most scripts, the enumerate versions is required. So we'll put that in. We'll put in a lowercase sc for default scripts. We'll run that in verbose mode, and then we'll run it against server 01. And you can see in verbose mode, it shows the ports that are open as it detects them. It, it's now initiating the in-map scripting engine. And it's complete. So let's scroll up and take a look at the output. So you can see this time we had much more verbose output. So we can see the version of DNS's bind. Uh, we can scroll down, we can see the HTTP version, it's 1.1. We can see the information from SMB running on it, and we get all of this from the default uh, in-map scripts. We can also scan hosts using individual scripts using the tac tac script option. So in this case, we're gonna use the HTTP malware host script, which goes out and it scans HTTP servers and it looks for known backdoors or malware. So we're gonna use the inmap hyphen SV tac tac script equals HTTP hyphen malware hyphen hosts, and then we're gonna do that on port 443, and then server 03, which has a web server running on it. And it's done. So we can see the results of the script here. HTTP malware host, host appears to be clean. Excellent. As you can see, Nmap is one of the most complete and accurate port scanners used by security professionals today. And it's definitely one that you should commit to learning. Remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.